So lowering cholesterol. Well, first of all, I don't think that cholesterol is the demon that it's been made out to be. Um, we should be also concerned about levels of homocysteine, um, which can be corrected by B vitamin intake. So cholesterol might be high in a vegetarian, it might be low in someone who eats a lot of red meat. Um, but I find that we have monitored cholesterol and very often that becomes a reason for people to stay on medication for the rest of their lives and have continuous medical visits. And of course, being on cholesterol lowering drugs can also inhibit hormonal production. We need some cholesterol in order to make our sex hormones and steroidal hormones. So um, one of my favorite remedies for lowering cholesterol is to drink lemon and water. The juice of half a lemon in a glass of water helps to fluidify the blood. Eating two to three tart apples a day can bind with cholesterol. Apples contain pectin, which has a magnetic-like activity to bind with the cholesterol and carry it out of your body via the digestive system. And that's a very pleasant enough remedy. And there are herbs that can lower cholesterol. Uh, hawthorn berry is one of my favorites. It's a member of the rose family, much like apples and peaches and cherries. And hawthorn berries has been known to reduce arterial plaque, to uh, normalize blood pressure, and it even helps to strengthen the contractive force of the heart because of its high calcium chloride content. So before we sign up for a lifelong program of pharmaceutical drugs, you know, look at diet, look at herbs, and we also know that refined carbohydrates and sugar can elevate cholesterol. It's not only the fats that we need to be concerned about. So I'm really encouraging people to, you know, take charge of their health and pay attention rather than, you know, taking the first drug that's offered to you. I mean, really, there's a lot of times we should say no to drugs and pharmaceutical drugs are really at the top of the list and become your own physician. And um, I think very often people shrug it off and say, well, high cholesterol is in my family. There's nothing we can do about it. And yes, genetics do play a factor, but whatever our genetics give us, it means that we need to work harder and more diligently to overcome what nature has given us. So we might have also inherited that, you know, Uncle Bob ate, you know, a pound of bacon every Saturday morning and um, a loaf of white bread. So we don't have to inherit the bad habits of our ancestors. So in order to protect the thyroid, well, if we really want to get to the core, we should protect ourselves from drinking fluoridated water and fluoridated water is still practiced in the United States, although I think there's many counties that are campaigning against it, so please uh, address that issue. We also know that peanuts can inhibit thyroid function. Soy can inhibit thyroid function. I know a lot of people are concerned about eating raw cruciferous vegetables, which are things like broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower, but I certainly am not cutting those out of my diet because when you cook those, you also decrease their anti-cancer properties, their content of iso, um, isothiocyanates. So um, eating seaweeds is one of the ways we can nourish our thyroid glands. So we want to select seaweeds from clean waters. Lately, I've been buying seaweeds from the Atlantic North Coast, but remember it's all one ocean and our oceans are becoming uh, terribly polluted. So we all, all need to take a stand and do what we can to protect our oceans. But um, seaweeds like kelp and dulse can be sprinkled on our food. We can find them in capsules. Um, you know, you don't have to um, put uh, fish in nori wrappers. You can put uh, guacamole. You can put shredded up cauliflower. You can put carrots and avocados and make wonderful nori wraps and really make friends with seaweed. Um, seaweeds grow in this mineral rich brine of the ocean and they transform the ocean's minerals in a way so that our bodies can utilize them and benefit. So um, also in Asian medicine, the health of our thyroid is governed by the health of our kidneys. So again, look at not only the type of water that we're drinking, how much we're drinking water, but we should also think about um, 
uh, eating more black colored foods. Our thyroids enjoy a bit of light exposure. So getting outdoors and getting some light on this gland because light does penetrate your skin and maybe not be wearing a turtleneck or a scarf all the time. And you can actually massage your thyroid gland, maybe even using a little bit of essential oil of frankincense to kind of gently massage up and down the thyroid gland. So love your thyroid, it governs metabolism. And one last thing to help our thyroid gland is improve the quality of salt that you're eating. We know that many people developed uh, goiters in the 1950s when there was uh, no iodine in the salt. Unfortunately, we have totally turned salt into a drug. Uh, salt is usually heated to about 1400 degrees. All the minerals are removed from it and then they sell those minerals to the vitamin companies. So you could do yourself a favor by um, maybe using kelp and dulse to salt your food, but also look at better quality salt like Celtic salt or Himalayan salt or um, uh, orso, mineral, orso mineral salt would be another one. Salt really should not be white, just like sugar shouldn't be white. Um, we want to eat whole foods as unrefined as possible. Insomnia, so many people suffer from insomnia. So I'm a big believer in getting ready for the next day, the night before. It gives you less to think and worry about while you're trying to sleep. So that might mean check the weather and lay out your clothes. Are you gonna need a sweater? Are you gonna need an extra pair of socks? Um, you know, get your clothes out of the laundry, empty the dishwasher, make sure you have what you need to give the kids breakfast. Um, if you drive a car, you know, maybe have the car filled up, whatever it is so that you can start the next day with a clean slate. And then um, light triggers wakefulness. So as we move into our sleeping time, you might think about dimming the lights. So when we go from staring at a computer to total darkness, our brains are usually not totally adjusted. So I, um, I teach in Iceland every year and in the summertime it's light even at three in the morning. And I found that if I put a, a you know, t-shirt or an eye, pillow over my eyes, I would sleep so deeply. And now I am such a big believer on sleeping with an eye pillow or a little mask. But a lot of times we think our rooms are dark, but there's, um, you know, smoke alarms and there's digital clocks and there's night lights and there's street lights creeping in through the curtains. So darkness is very helpful. A warm bath before bed can be relaxing. Um, when I spoke about getting ready for the next day, that might mean having your books and your paperwork, looking at your day timer. And um, also if we would stop eating and drinking three hours before bed. Some people might not like that, but if we eat before bed, we're actually energizing ourselves and uh, stimulating ourselves. And we're gonna find that our digestion is better and our sleep is better. So one of my uh, lifestyle techniques is to, right after dinner, which is usually eaten earlier, is to floss, brush my teeth, use the water pick, and then say, the kitchen is closed, tempt me not, I don't care what it is, organic kale chips, no thank you, I'm done for the day eating. And then of course there are herbs to help us sleep. I've mentioned uh, kava kava and valerian, um, oat straw, passion flower, which helps you to sleep, not to be more passionate, lemon balm. And you don't have to reinvent anything. You can go to a health food store or an herb store and buy a tea, a tincture, or a capsule that's already prepared into maybe a, a good tasting tea. Now, if you drink tea right before bed, you may have to wake up to go to the bathroom, which can also uh, keep you from falling back to sleep. So you might find that two capsules with just a little bit of water or a dropper full or two of tincture can also help you to sleep. And there's you know, wonderful homeopathic remedies. One of the ones that I sometimes use, it sounds a little ironic, but homeopathic coffee accruda, which is made from coffee, in very, very dilute amounts can actually help calm a racing mind. And then when we are in the activity of trying to fall asleep, think of nothing but the in and out of your breathing. It's really easy to get all stimulated if you're thinking about you know, this or that or that cute person at work or what you're gonna do tomorrow. So just you know, turn off your mind, relax and float downstream. I think uh, one of the Beatles said that. Herbs to strengthen the liver. Love your liver. <laughs> 
so you don't have to get a new one. Um, our livers are really our great filtering agent of our body and they do so much for us. And I think a lot of people get confused, you know, what does the liver do and where are the kidneys? Um, but you know, your liver on the right side, our liver is really sensitive to pesticides and uh, hormones that have been added, added to animal foods, artificial colors, excitotoxins like NutraSweet and monosodium glutamate. So we wanna protect our livers from all of those chemicals that creep into our food and environment as much as possible. So our liver really benefits from the sour flavor. So eating more berries is a great thing to do. And of course you would want to eat organic berries. So, you know, I think of berries as like colorful jewels full of, uh, you know, uh, anthocyanidins and anti-cancer compounds, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, you know, all those colorful, slightly sour foods. Um, kiwi would be another sour food. Sauerkraut would be another sour food that can benefit the liver. Uh, lemon and water and other citrus uh, products like you know grapefruit and um, lime so make frequent use of those and then eat more greens one of the ways that we can help our livers is uh, by using greens now some greens are really high in something called uh, calcium oxalate which can actually um, help in the formation of kidney stones, which is something you don't want. So uh, I like uh, kale and dandelion greens. They're actually lower in oxalates than greens such as beet greens or Swiss chard or um, spinach for that matter. So our liver also benefits from some herbs that have traditionally been used to improve their function. I think of dandelion root, burdock root, yellow dock root, and they can all be mixed together into a tea. And since they're all roots, they should be you know, steeped at maybe, or, or simmered maybe for about 20 minutes with the lid on or uh, made in a jar overnight so they get to steep with the help of thyme rather than uh, being harshly boiled. Uh, and you might find that these same herbs also help to clear up skin conditions like acne and eczema and psoriasis. So, um, Again, avoid damaging your liver with you know, too much coffee and alcohol, prescription drugs. All prescription drugs are hard on the liver and kidneys.